Hey guys, it's Ellen here and welcome to my channel! Today we're going to have fun painting some watercolor abstracts. Um, I go over this step by step. I had created this one at the beginning and I do this one with you guys step by step. So I go over this technique about removing paint and just creating a fun, you know, kind of just relaxing painting, thinking about color, shape, you know, and, and movement with the watercolor. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit it so you know when I, my tutorials are up. Also, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, a live stream on the top tier, and a download for me. Uh, it's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out boop, up here. So, without further ado, let's get painting. Okay guys, I'm going to go over how, how I created this kind of fun little abstract. Uh, it's pretty simple and there's a little technique in here, kind of what I use for my um, abstract flowers, this removal of paint technique, um, really just kind of washing in color and removing some color and adding color. And so it's really good to have, uh, if you have scraps like of your Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. If you don't like a really good 100% cotton paper, otherwise you can't really get the fun bleeds, but you can still do this on a little bit cheaper paper. Um, you know, uh, you can try it You can just practice on it. So and I, I had a color palette. I picked like some blues with some greens and a little bit of brown. And then I added some accents with the uh, Holbein gold paint. I'll be using my Princeton 8 and maybe I'll use my four, but I don't think I need my four because my Princeton eight is brand new and the point is really, really tight. So I can do a lot of really small, skinny little marks here. Um, paper towels, and my paints. And I already mixed up some blues and browns. This is burnt umber. This is uh, neutral tint, ultramarine blue, Prussian blue. Oh, I, I didn't really use the Prussian blue. I used the ultramarine, the neutral tint, the burnt umber. Uh, the peacock and the cabin yellow deep. So I use these five and I just mix up all these kind of greens and blues and whatnot colors from here. And of course my water jars are up here. Wait, wait, you can see them. <laughs> so let's just go over. I just grabbed some more, you know, little scraps I have here and I'll show you kind of how I did this. So I just mixed up some ultramarine with some neutral tint. I'll have that close by. It's good to have all the colors close by. Um, there's the burnt umber. And I kind of mixed that with some green. So I have the cabin yellow deep here. And I've just mixed up all kinds of greens and added some browns and played around with it. I'm going to take the peacock and grab some of the burnt umber. Nothing was really green green here. It was more of a bluish green brown, green, Let's see like deep turquoise, a little burnt umber in here. As you can see, I didn't really do, and this will be more of like a neutral tint in here, some green. I'm playing around with these colors, just, just neutral colors. And if you want yours brighter, do it bright. Do what colors you like. You don't have to go by what I'm doing. I'm just showing you some of the things that I did. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker. So what I did kind of in the beginning, I kind of just played around with adding some deep blues and then mixed in some green. See, I'm just kind of whip, grabbing water on my brush. Got my browns here. A little bit here. Grab some new tools. This uh, bluish kind of black color here. Maybe I'll grab some more ultramarine up here and make it a little bit lighter. And put that in here. I'm changing this one up a little bit. You hear that clanking. I'm grabbing some more water. Just kind of pushing the paint around. Grab some green and put that out here. And play around with the colors. and how you want it to look. And grab some of this blue, put this over here. 
Maybe grab some more turquoise. I'll add a little brown to that. This one's going to be a little bit different from the other one, but I'm going to show you kind of how I did it. It's always good to play first. That's what I did. So I'm going and adding some, seeing brown and some green. I don't want to fill this up too much. Okay, so it's still very damp and wet here. And I took the neutral tint and the ultramarine, and like a deep navy. And you see how I have these, you know, flowers kind of here. I just whoosh, did where I want the flower to go. Okay, and this is already started. I can do here. I'm gonna do another one kind of over here, right? Do like three. Then I had some kind of peeking on the side here, bleeding. This one's kind of dry, but see, I just put like a little spot out here. You see that kind of here. Took the tip of my brush, kind of pushed out that paint and made like a little flower just by going like that on the edge. Could do another one up here. So you grab that dark color. Just kind of went right to the edge and took the tip of the brush and just went out and made this scribbly flower. Having fun. <laughs> I'm going to go in and add some blue to this brown. I'm just kind of bleed it in around here, maybe more green around here. And I'll show you why. So now that it's damp, I'm going to show you this technique I did when removing the paint so it looks like almost like daisies, right? So, I've shown this many times in some of my tutorials. Clean off my brush. We're going to just take a clean brush. We're going to have the paper towel close by. I'm going to just tap down, lift, clean. Oops. This is kind of what you do with that, with the bokeh kind of thing. See how I'm removing it? It reminds you of like a, like a negative photograph. We're lifting the paint and I'm tapping the color on the paper towel. Look how cool that looks. You want this color around here to be slightly dark. If it's too light, you're barely going to see this white. Isn't this fun? Looking a little bit closer. Now some of this paint is already dried, so it's not going to really lift. And I don't want to really ruin my brush by trying to scrub it out. But I think just having the side ones right here are pretty enough. I can try and remove some of it here with water. It's not really coming out, but that's fine. Again, here we go again. This one's actually coming up more fun than the first one. Remove the paint. You guys, you can experiment with that. See? Tap, tap. It's like a sponge. Woo! Removing the paint. It's got a nice point, so it's making that real pointy tip to the petals. It's just constant lift, tap. Grab some water, clean off my brush, lift, tap. Now you can grab a smaller brush. Let me grab my small little filbert brush. Oh, that was dirty. Goodness gracious. And I got water on that. Great. Sorry, guys. Can go on the side and make really, it's depending on the size of the brush. See how much smaller these little marks are going to be? Still fun, though. I just like this technique. It's fun. Now, paint got a little muddled here. I can go back in and add some. Still damp over in here. Kind of add some paint back in here. Why not? We can do whatever we want. And do some little 
kind of like daisy marks out here. It's a doodle. It's abstract, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But look how cool that looks, right? Go back in my brush, clean it off, and I can go back in here and lift it up. You don't want to fuss too much because you can wreck the paper. But it's just a fun technique. I don't want to go too crazy. I'm not going to do it everywhere. It'll look fun. So while that's drying, um, and also, so I had the gold, like I showed you. Get this a little wet. This is a great gold from Holbein. I'm going to water this down. Some metallic and do some kind of repelling inside if it's still damp in the center. Kind of like what gouache does. I like the gold and the blue. I can put little dots around. Still a little dry, so it's not really doing it here, but um, you can go re-wet it so it has that kind of effect. So I can go back in and add the blue kind of color here. Remove some of that gold. And because it's damp, then I can go back in and add it. And it will do that repelling thing like a spider. Mm. There we go. Woohoo! This one's more fun. Now, from here, you can take, like I have in the picture there, make some gold, simple leaves on a stem coming out from this abstract kind of blob. I don't know what you'd call it. Go on top of these. Just really simple. Almost like um, wheat grass or whatever. You can make some nice pretty open leaves. And then I had some nice pretty actual leaves. I have the green here. Different greens. Little browns too. So, put some leaves, just pushing down on my brush. I want to make some more brown ones. Pushing down, see, side, side, connect in the middle, take the tip, and connect to your stem. You go right on top of that flower. These are really simple things you can do. Make a really pretty painting. I think watercolor is the most playful medium. Because you know you can just, while it's wet, see right now the brown here, you can take a concentrated color, play around with adding it, and watch it bleed. All these different things you can do. Acrylic doesn't really have that kind of fun to it. <laughs> it's fun in its own way. It's just different. There we go. I do have an acrylic channel. Um, you can see the links in the description box. And on my about page, I have to actually add some more videos. It's been really hard lately to get any work done. Um, so now I just added those pretty little leaves. Right? We can kind of add some more out this way. Kind of going up this way right on top of that. Fairly light. Just really simple. We're building layers of layers of doodles, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what you'd really call it. It's just an abstract design that has no rhyme or reason, but just fun and relaxing. Because the reason why I did all this was just to relax, play with watercolor. Again, I'm go back in and add some leaves here. Just playing. Maybe some darker green. Some ones out here. 
this one's gonna be a lot different than the first one I did. You can. What's great about those abstracts is you can never repeat it. So you can try. Well, actually, any painting really. Um, you can add. So I can add more gold in here than I didn't do before. Take the gold. Can add little dots. Oops, that was a lot of water on that one. <laughs> Don't you like when I make mistakes? I'm sure you love it. Pip towel, by the way, keep them close by. You can do a little gold dots. Have fun with it. Um, gold here. I'm do some like gold stems up here. Open leaves. Let me zoom in more so you can see better. See, I'm just doing some simple little gold stems. I'll do another one that crosses over this one. So it's an open stem. I mean, um, leaf. See, like an outline. You can go do a little gold dots around that flower out here also. See how that one's kind of psh, went like that because it was wet. Some more dots out here. Just play around where you want to put the gold. Do like a little circle. It doesn't have to be like all serious. Circle within a circle. Fixing these little round circles. Right? And just have some fun. Do little dots out here. I'm really liking this one too. I could sit here and do this all day long. I've had such a stressful week. And this is when I want to just come home, just take out some paints and play, you know, experiment. This is a good time to experiment with color and, you know, different colorways. You can add like the vein gold and the brown. So like I said, I only have a few colors. I have five colors that I mix all these different colors with. You keep a limited palette, has a cohesive look. You know, sometimes you can still do a palette that's crazy all out there. I'm gonna grab some deeper blues now, the ones we mixed here. With that ultramarine blue and the neutral tint. You can do some dark dots here and play around. Adding some color out here. You can do some daisies like that. It's all about play. And you never know how it kind of turns out. Um, I didn't do any black one. I mean black blue stems, but I could do that. Open blue stems. Just a little bit, and I did dots over here. Could do some blue dots. And up in here. Just playing around with all this. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I think it is. And actually, I think I like it better than the first one. What do you think? I think they're both pretty in their own way. You just, you know, this is when you say, well, when do you stop? You could go overboard and then it just kind of loses its just uniqueness and simplification of how different and pretty it is. I mean, I could add a million more stems, but then it's going to get a little overkill, right? Kind of don't want to do that. You can put little lines out here, little dashes. You could highlight the, the petals if you wanted to. I don't want to do that because I like that um, mystical quality to it. I'm going to go back in and add some 
browned. More like a gray brown. Actually, I'll do a gray. I haven't done gray yet. I'm going to maybe gray something over here or up here. I don't know if I want to just keep this the way it is. I might want to keep it the way it is and just kind of do something down here. Just a really tiny little gray stems. So it's always good to make a variety of sizes. I could turn some gray leaves, open leaves again. All this fun stuff. Adding in the veins to this, make a darker stem here. You know, put some little sprays out here, little teeny branches. This is the good stuff, guys. This is where it becomes like so much fun. And just takes you away from your day. And the different colors you play with, the different, you know, it will look completely different. If I did this all in like hot tones, oranges and pinks and reds, it would look completely different. I'm going to um, highlight underneath each leaf here, some blue, I can put that inside the gold. Play around with that on the outside of the gold. I'll go back over this gray one so you can see this more. And that's that. I don't, like I said, I don't want to fuss too much. Oh. And this one, I did add some white gouache. You could go in and add some white gouache. Just going to mix up some of this. I just did some, just a little accent, nothing special. Picked kind of areas that were darker, put little dots. See again, see how different it just changes it. Little cute little white dots. Delicate. I don't want to do it too much because then it becomes goofy. But I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This is what I want you to do. You need to play with the paint, paint with, play with the colors. So I really just, like I said, I used the yellow just to make the green. But whatever yellow you have, whatever blues you have, I used a peacock, burnt number, neutral tint, which is kind of like a gray. but and then the ultramarine, and then the yellow, so these five colors. And like I said, you could have done a whole different one, a whole different look using maybe orange and magenta and yellow. And then you could add in brown with that, a little more hot tones. But I like the cool tones. I feel like blue is very relaxing, makes you feel relaxed. And right now we're stressed out getting ready for the holiday, so. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Um, if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. <laughs> we have fun over here. This is all about fun patterns. See, I love making patterns. Um, I do it all the time because I design fabric and all kinds of other stuff. So this is something I like to do. And I love this technique where you remove the paint. You could do this with, you know, not just flowers, other things too. So try it with like an object, you know, a fruit or vegetable or whatever, anything you think of, like a cup or something. <laughs> Try it. So thank you guys for stopping by and take care and I will speak to you soon.